Hey guys, my name is Shai and I am recording this weekly reading for January 23rd. Yes, I'm recording it on the 23rd and it's good for, you know, the week-ish time around here. I don't take the uh, dates too, too, <laughs> too, too seriously, but I do want to talk about the astrology for this week. But if you want to skip straight to the card reading, I'll put a timestamp down below and I'll also put all of these um, interesting astrological dates in the description box. So um, I'm actually recording this on a perfect day to be doing a reading because 23rd, the sun is conjunct Mercury. And you know, there's a sun conjunct Mercury a few times every year. So it's not like a huge, huge big deal. Um, but I always find that it, it makes our it's just like a great day for doing any kind of channeling and receiving messages, right? It's like your mind is getting refreshed. Your mind is getting cleared. I'm actually finally feeling kind of fresh and clear after last week was pretty much of a slog. I mean, I was having a great week, but I was very, very tired. You know, we were in, like, there was this um, like lower chakra, like healing and upgrading going around. And there's also been a DNA upgrade going around. And I was like so tired feeling it in my body so much. And then yesterday I felt it, it, it was like, it was climbing up through my system all the way up into my head and yesterday I had a headache all day and just my body was aching and today it's like yes we've kind of synchronizing all of that in and feeling so much <laughs> so much more alive today because when the sun conjuncts mercury it's like a new moon for your mind right a new moon for your mind it's a whole refresh and reboot so As you can tell, I'm a little bit at a loss for words because I was just kind of feeling the feeling, <laughs> feeling the feeling of this. And to me, the feeling is like a door opening wide, just like some kind of possibilities and opportunities opening, opening wide. And if, if there's, there might be confusion actually with this, you might feel like, I don't know what I want. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. This could be even be just suddenly feeling like food, that food doesn't really appeal, that like nothing really seems better than anything else. Um, and I've been actually feeling that. Typically, I, I'm one of those people that if you ask me, hey, where do you want to go out to dinner? I like, I have an opinion. I always know what I want to eat, right? But at, like today, I just kind of feel like I almost don't even want to eat because it's like nothing really seems that great. So with this opening up of opportunity, it could be feeling a little bit of... Um, almost like apathy or almost like nothing really seems that appealing, but that's fine. Um, if that's, if that's where we're at, then we just sit in that and go, okay, the opportunities It's like, we don't need to take action on anything quite yet. I don't really feel that this is like the week for action. <laughs> this whole, this whole of January, right? Is this the, uh, not really the time for starting brand new things, but getting ready to start new things in the coming months. Right? So you don't need to take action on anything right now. Just sitting in the feeling of opportunities coming for you and doors opening and everything opening wide and knowing that this is the reset of your mind. And interesting things coming up. Um, <laughs> tomorrow, Mars enters Capricorn on the 24th. That's Monday for me um, here in North America. <laughs> um, oh, that's going to be so interesting. you might find yourself being irritated with authority, okay? Irritated with authority. And in fact, um, so Mars right now for me personally is conjunct my sun. My sun is at zero degrees Capricorn. So today Mars is like moving uh, right up next to my sun and is gonna be moving over it and uh, chafing at restraints, chafing at restraints, chafing at ev anybody telling you what to do. You, this is a really empowering energy if you're trying to break free from any kind of, um, any any kind of like patriarchal restraints, any kind of systems that aren't serving you, you're gonna be irritated with them. You're gonna be like, I like, don't tell me what to do. It's that kind of feeling. You can't tell me what to do. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Type of feeling. So, you know, that can cause some tension in your interpersonal relationships. And again, it this is a recurring thing I'm noticing. If you have to, like a toxic family life, you know, if you're stuck in a living situation with to toxic people, or if you work with toxic people, this is going to be way more of a, like making you face that and making you move away from it as much as you can. Um, but for everybody who's kind of, who, who has like a very harmonious Capricorn energy in their life. So for, you know, 
if you don't have any issues with systems and with society and you don't have any toxic people in your home life, this is going to be uh, way more... Um, It'll be like waves, it'll be like ripples, a little bit of bumps, just to help you rejigger, <laughs> like rejigger things, like rejiggering systems. And there's this feeling of like dominoes, dominoes clicking into place, boom, 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 boom. So for anybody who ha who knows that um, your Capricorn energy and your relationship to Capricorn energy is already vibing high, then this might, you guys might actually be able to make, start making some progress on things. But for anybody who's in the more challenging space with Capricorn energy, this is going to be more of a clearing and healing effect. Um, and, th and that is really going to serve you because then in the coming months, you will have cleaned out a bunch of space. You will have cleared away all of these um, toxic energies that aren't serving you and then you're going to be making um, actions and taking steps later on so if you see people around you if you see some people hey like suddenly they're able to take action um, but you're not able to take action yet don't get discouraged don't worry about it your time for action is going to be coming you know in a couple of months I think <sighs> and meanwhile we have like this Capricorn sandwich happening so on the one side Mars is coming into Capricorn and on the other side Mercury is retrograding back into Capricorn Mars and Mercury both reactivating Capricorn so even though the sun just moved into Aquarius and now we're all in this very um Aquarian like open-minded um eclectic um like social like humanitarian kind of space there there's going to be like a repeat of some of the energies from Capricorn season <laughs> especially because on the 28th, I think that's Friday for North America, um, Mercury is conjuncting Pluto, Pluto, and we already had one of those. So you could think back to whatever happened to you on December 30th, whatever themes you were going through, what was your experience? There's going to be a revisiting of that. And if you had a very difficult time on Mercury on December 30th, then don't, don't freak out. Don't panic. I don't think that this is going to be like repeating this, um, like repeating the wound. If you felt like you were wounded around December 30th, um, it's like a revisiting of that so that you can actually f feel healing. So if, um, I've actually already been seeing this happening. We've been having things repeat themselves, like mistakes or problems repeat themselves, but try not to panic if that's happening because it, there, I promise you it's a blessing in disguise. So just a quick example. Um, <laughs> a couple of months ago, I broke my husband's $175 like Xbox Elite controller. Okay. This like really expensive special controller. I dropped it and I broke it and I felt terrible. Um, but it actually ended up being okay because he ended up being able to get a refund on it. Um, and, and all of that. And, um, now he's got a better, better controller that is cheaper and better at the same time, but he had it for a week. And then what happens? I drop it and I think I break it again. And I'm like, I'm like crying at this point because I'm like, how did I, like, I just, I just, like, I, I broke it again. I did it again. It was this feeling of how did I possibly make the same mistake again? How am I going to confess this? I'm going to have to like confess my crime <laughs> and all of this. But it ended up that I didn't actually break it. Um, it just needed to be recalibrated and it was fine. <laughs> so this kind of thing, right? If you have a moment of panic going, I did it again, I did it again. suspend your reaction and wait to see how it plays out because these things are part of moving things around and there's actually a way bigger story to this whole like um controller thing that's happening in my house because my husband and my stepson are like really into gaming right um you know my husband ended up after going through all of this with trying to fix these controllers and everything he's really inspired to actually start making his own custom controllers and i think that's going to be you know a good side gig for him and it's really cool so yeah i made a mistake yeah i broke something but it was actually all part of this bigger plan unfolding so if you're having these weird things repeat don't worry about it wait for the long picture because it's going to take a couple of months right for this to unfold and for you to see the big picture on this um, and this is also happening concerning Venus. So concerning your love and finances, right? Anything that's been happening in your love life or your financial situation over the past month, especially since December 19th, right? Venus is stationing direct and reviewing everything she's just been through on the retrograde, right? So everything through, especially between December 19th and January 29th, it's going to be closing closing doors actually closing doors bringing you closure right if you've been going through breakups or like just fa like 
relationship drama of every, every kind. There might be like little bits of things coming up for you to review, but it's to close it off, close it off, close it off. And she's going to be also depositing her blessings. So in terms of love and finances, because it's funny, we think of Venus as a love planet, but I've personally experienced how her transits are also a money planet, right? She's Because she brings uh, blessings when she's functioning well. And he, she's had this crazy journey through Capricorn and then retrograded back through Capricorn. And now she's going back through Capricorn one more time, depositing those blessings, bringing that closure and bringing the lessons. So yeah, uh, basically get ready to, to, to repeat December and January. There's going to be these repetitions. Um, but it is going to work out for our highest good. We're going to see in a couple of months how this all made sense. <laughs> um, so this first card I jumped out was disappointment with the five of cups. I know some people don't want to hear that you're going to be repeating the last two months, right? Because it hasn't exactly been the funnest time. But this Five of Cups, this is always heart healing. This is always heart healing. Even if two cups have fallen over, there are still three cups here. And honestly, it feels like Venus is going to come along and like put your cups upright. I'm going to shuffle this card back in because I don't really... I think that was just like a... <laughs> ah, that's how some of us are feeling with this um, Capricorn review, right? Um, I actually had a really good Capricorn season. Um, so a note to anybody who's still watching this, even though you had a really good Capricorn season and you're, you're vibing pretty high, um, it's like there could be a repeat of the fun. What were you doing on December 30th or New Year's Eve, right? What were you doing at the end of that, um, like the end of the year, right? What was really awesome? Um, and if something felt like it could have been extremely awesome, but it ended up being only kind of awesome, it's like this can come through and level it up again, level it up again. Um, almost like re repower, repower. What does that mean? For, for me, I'll just give you how this relates to me personally. Um, all of my December, it's like my favorite month of the year because it's my solar return and the solstice and all of that. It's so like high energy and powering. And then by the time I got to January 1st, I just like, even though I've had a good January, I've been exhausted. I've been, I've been slow. Um, I've been kind of unenthusiastic about, you know, doing things that I usually like to do. Um, I've just kind of been focused on work and my business. I've been doing lots of readings and that's been all cool, but I've been kind of like kind of detached, right? And I, I'm starting to feel like when's the when's the party coming back? When's the party coming back? Like I, I want that enthusiasm, that excitement coming back. So the um, Mercury and Venus kind of doing their review through Capricorn can be bringing that excitement, bringing that enthusiasm back for those of us who are um, kind of at a better place with the Capricorn energy. <laughs> okay, Nine of Wands, Resilience. The star. The moon. And <laughs> the universe. Okay, this card to me, look at that. Those are those are the chakras. I'm talking about that chakra, um, the lower chakra alignment that's going on. Look. And the heart healing that came up. Okay, so as of this week, we are transitioning from lower chakra um, clearing and healing. I mean, this is going to ripple out, right? It doesn't happen for everybody on the exact same day. It'll kind of ripple through like soul groups and ripple through just whoever's ready for it. And then it eventually rip ripples out to everybody. So we're moving on from the lower chakra energy, having this kind of transitionary period through the heart healing. And then once you get through your heart healing, then you come up into the higher chakras. So that's, I'm jumping all the way to the end, right? That's where we're headed. It's time to start getting this higher chakra advancement was the word that just came to mind higher chakra advancement that is exciting that is very cool because okay the image they're showing me is <laughs> like literally someone's upper chakras your crown your third eye and your throat they, they showed me like beams of light connecting those higher chakras just and like looping them down into the earth and then like literally looping them 
into the earth. And that reminds me of something else I've been noticing is that the, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have been noticing this too, synchronicities are starting to get really weird. It's like an upping of synchronicities, which I've said before, I've noticed before and have just, it's like synchronicities have just been snowballing. And I'm sure most of you guys are pretty used to living this like synchronistic life where you come to expect that your life is synchronistic, right? You expect to be able to turn on a YouTube video and watch some tarot reading or whatever it is, and you expect to see it reflecting different things in your life, right? And you you expect, you know, your really close soul family to kind of be um, picking up on the same vibes as you, and you kind of expect this life of synchronicity, but it's been getting crazy weird. Um, and what, and I, what I was feeling is that it's like the synchronicities are grounding into the physical plane, and so they're almost getting alarming. I've actually had some, a few synchronicities this wink, wink, this wink, <laughs> this week that were so, um, <laughs> so grounded that I almost thought I was being spied on. Like I had this moment of paranoia. So for example, I, um, was like cleaning the apartment, right? And I had a bunch of garbage and I, I'm on the fourth floor. So I have to like run all the way down across the parking lot of the dumpster and it like takes a long time. So typically what I do is I just put my garbage outside for until I'm done cleaning. And then I sometimes I'll have my stepson run out, like run it out, right? So I just put my garbage outside my door for like a minute and you know, that might sound gross, but it's not because uh, our hallway for our apartment is like, it's an outside hallway, it's a breezeway, so it's not like inside of the building, right? And there's only a few neighbors up here. Nobody comes up here and we all do this. We all just kind of stick our garbage outside just for like, you know, a little bit and then run it down. Like it's just kind of an unspoken agreement among my neighbors that we're cool with it and that's what we do. So I stuck my garbage outside for just a minute and then I, I closed the door grab my phone and the apartment management had sent out a message saying a reminder that it's a, a like a like a lease infringement to put your garbage outside your door and i, I was like what <laughs> did one of my neighbors wrap me out did like management see my garbage were they up here they never come up here <laughs> and for a minute i was just like that that is like that is so weird is someone spying on me is, is one of my neighbors is one of my neighbors like really mad at me for putting my garbage out and then i was like wait a second there's like no way there's no way that like that that was about me that was just a synchronicity right and like another funny thing was um like I, I was thinking, my husband and I were like, should we like renew our Costco membership? And uh, then he like looks on his phone and one of his apps, he had like qualified for a free Costco membership. We we're like, that's pretty cool because we didn't really want to pay for it because we don't actually need like like tons and tons of groceries, right? It's like a household of three people. So it's not all, it's not always really that worth it for us. And then my sister, like in, you know, my group chat with my family, my sister texts the family and is like, hey, I just got a Costco membership. <laughs> and it's like so so weird so the, the synchronicities are starting to like get really grounded and um yeah if you suddenly feel like that that like that is even beyond belief some of these synchronicities could be beyond belief and you might think that someone is spying on you but i mean although it is always possible i will admit that it is always possible that you know you are being spied on but i think for the like 99.9% .9 of the time it's just a synchronicity right 99.9% .9 of the time it it no paranoia is not required it is just a synchronicity um and so just think about how you know you might expect these synchronicities on this kind of ethereal um kind of on an internet level right a lot of my synchronicities come through the internet but then when they start happening like really in a, in a very grounded way in your physical life it can almost be alarming but we're getting used to that and it is such a beautiful sign that like the earth itself is vibrating higher and that these synchronicities are coming into our physical lives and that's going to be making life so much more magical, right? It begins with the synchronicities and then it kind of continues on to like magic and even things feeling like miracles, right? If your synchronicities are grounding into the physical physical world, it's this like star energy coming down. Nine of Wands resilience, right? We've waited a long time. We've we've been working for so long and some people feel like they're at the end of the rope, right? Some people are just kind of getting bored and frustrated and going like, okay, like I'm ready for the next thing. When's, when's the next thing gonna happen, right? Some people are feeling like I've been struggling for so long. It's like being at the end of a marathon, right? But the star is coming, right? This star energy is flooding the earth and like bringing the magic, bringing the light of the stars, weaving it into the earth. And the star is the healing after the tower moment. So for everybody who's been having tower moments, the star is bringing this healing. The star is bringing the healing. This moon card, it reminds me that I'll be talking about the new moon in Aquarius because that's going to be like like next Monday or something. So I'm going to talk about it in next week's video. Um, but we're actually already weaving up into that. We're weaving up into that 
I was looking up at the moon yesterday or two days ago maybe and it was at the half moon stage and it feels like a cascading waterfall. A cascade, a cascading waterfall, just water like whoosh, washing, washing, washing away, washing away. I want um, something more about this moon card. What do I want? Ooh. Activating abundance. I knew I was supposed to use this in this reading, but I wasn't sure what for. And for this moon card. <laughs> okay, that's all I had to shuffle. Overcoming internal limitations. Mindset. Remember I said today's uh, Mercury-Sun conjunction is like a new moon for the mind? And then we have the new moon in Aquarius coming up, which is a refreshing of your air energy, your mental energy. A lot of that going on, a lot of that going on, overcoming internal limitations. So, this beautiful cascade of water coming through to wash your mind, to wash your mind. The star is also Aquarius energy and water energy. And it's, I don't, I don't know if I can get any more articulate about this. <laughs> it's just that feeling of this water and this, it's almost like liquid light, like light turned water can, can, is, <laughs> it's like water is light and light is water. It's like they, they, light can be liquefied, but not, sometimes when I think of liquid light, I think of like more like liquid fire. To me right now, this feels more like light, like literally becoming water. <laughs> I don't know. You can just catch that vibe. And that's, it's like washing your mind, washing your mind. So much clearing. And that clearing and cleansing of your mind needs to happen in order for these, um, this chakra upgrade to come up into your higher mind, to come up into your third eye. So this, this is going to be experienced different levels of intensity for different people. Sorry, I just uh, accidentally messed up the camera. I think that's okay. Um, that's actually what what I just did with the camera was actually very synchronous. Um, I accidentally zoomed in like a little bit and then I zoomed out. Um, there's going to be a focus a focus on your thoughts, a focus on the thoughts that hold you back, right? And they're going to be like bubbling up to the surface. So if you have random thoughts coming up, bubbling up to the surface, this could be memories of stuff from when you were a kid or just random thoughts and you're like, why am I thinking about that, right? Different thoughts are being selected to bubble up to the surface and they're going to be washed away by this kind of liquid water light, okay? Washed away and it needs to be cleared. So depending on how much um, clearing to your third eye, to your higher mind, to your mental body, depending on how much clearing is required. Um, like if you have a ton of stuff coming up right now, a ton of stuff, and it doesn't actually really matter like where you're at in your journey, right? Because even if you already have, if you've already done a ton of clearing, if you maybe you've already been like working on clearing um, your third eye for like 20 years, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter because you could get into deeper and deeper and deeper levels of it. So I, it really has nothing to do with how much work you've done before or how long you've been working on this or how much you think you have left to clear. It's actually just what is relevant for you to like, what is relevant for you to clear right now? So you don't need to compare yourself to how, if other people are having a good week or a bad week or whatever, it's just whatever is relevant for you to clear right now, that is what is going to be cleared for you. And it's making this way for this higher chakra upgrade. And I feel like for some people, they're going to get stuck at this transitionary point with the green, with the heart chakra, with that disappointment, right? If you've had big disappointments lately, if you've had heartbreak, that means you're going to be spending more time um, working on your heart center before you move up into the um, higher chakras. But if heart healing isn't, re isn't really coming up for you that much right now, um, and I'm actually hearing for some people, the heart healing isn't going to be that kind of like heartbreak and like loss and just like disappointment and blah, right? For some people, it's actually going to be igniting your heart's courage, igniting the fire within your heart, igniting the fire within your heart. So there's all these levels to this. And then once you've kind of gone through the pocket of heart healing, then you go up into this higher, higher levels of upper chakra healing. 
an activation. I think this is really setting the stage for something, something big, something we're not going to understand quite yet. Thinker. Okay. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I'm sitting here talking about the higher mind, right? Yes, this is what's happening. And for a lot of people, this is bringing you into higher levels of um, neutrality in terms of being the observer. It's helping you get into an observer state. And often when you're uh, approaching a, a deeper level of the observer state, you know, to just be completely neutral, to completely hold non-judgment, to expand your bubble of non-judgment. I talk about this in the video I posted yesterday, if you want to hear more about that. Um, if you want to find those deeper levels of neutrality, first, some of those judgmental thoughts, some of those negative thoughts are going to come up to be cleared, right? So literally your mind is being washed clear so that you can step up into deeper levels of neutrality, which just helps you drop out of the low frequency emotions and thoughts and raise, like raises you up into the higher frequencies of your emotions and your thoughts, right? Um, what I wanted to say was, I feel like this is getting us ready for something that we're not going to understand quite yet because we still have this kind of reviewing energy happening. But I think later on in the year, we're going to be able to look back at this time period in everybody's like personal life and be like, wow, that was setting me up for so much success. That was setting me up for so much leveling up. It's like um, my third eye is throbbing. To me, this feels like we are setting the stage for some massive third eye upgrades and activations that are going to come through later this year. And honestly, I keep thinking of Leo season, which that actually makes sense because we're in Aquarius season. And so we're going to be, um, <laughs> it's almost like we're sending some of the stuff from Aquarius season. We're sending it through the axis all the way to its opposite. Its opposite is Leo season, right? So we might not know, we might not understand this deep, deep, deep work happening to our third eyes. We might not really understand it until Leo season, especially around uh, August 8th, you know, with Lionsgate, right? Um, it's like we're depositing, we're making a deposit for, and we're clearing the way and laying the, the foundations for third eye upgrades that are going to be happening like six months from now. Um, and that's how big this third eye upgrade is. It's going to, we're, we're going to be working on this for six months, but the, the foundational work is just happening now. Orphaned. This actually came out upside down. Um, if you saw it flip, <laughs> right? I want to read you guys something from the book on this. This, I feel, is a specific message for people who have been having a rough time. Um, okay, this is, there's quite a lot here, but <laughs> I want to read this part and then the reverse message on this. So the essential meanings, a sense of loss, an identity crisis, recognizing that you don't fit in, the need to belong, uncertainty about your place. Okay, so as we can see right away, those are Aquarius uh, themed messages. Anybody who is having trouble fitting in with the collective or fitting in with their family, apparently, damn, that's coming up. And this is going to be part of your heart healing for those of you who are doing that. And down here, we are all meant to have connections with other people within our family, society, and the larger culture. No man is an island, and it is important to recognize when being a part of, rather than separate from, is essential to your well-being. The issue at hand is the need to find where you fit in. Be true to your core truths and values. Perhaps you no longer identify with a group or community the way you did before, and you need to find a new situation. You might be feeling a deep sense of loss or confusion. Address this need for belonging and know that you will find your place with others of like mind and spirit. It's okay to let go of the pressure to fit in. Not everyone will understand you. It's time to move on. And maybe I'll just, I'll put, in case anybody wants to read the relationship message here, and there's also more messages, I'll just try to show it on the camera as best I can and you can pause to read that. Um, I also want to read this because this is the message for when it comes through reversed. Uh, this is per specifically for people who know they're having trouble with the Capricorn energy. They know they're having trouble with toxic family or workplace. Or if you feel completely alienated from, you know, society, <laughs> right? This is for you. The shadow side of this card speaks to the essence of abandonment. Perhaps you feel a need to remain apart because intimacy is too threatening. It also warns against creating inappropriate family structures in order to conceal old wounds. 
It's time to address the unhealthy alliances you've formed and make a decision to heal the past. You will not be abandoned by the world if you claim yourself as whole. Not all relationships are dysfunctional and not all of them will disappoint you. Don't abandon yourself. You can connect to others in a healthy way once you recognize your patterns and consciously choose to interrupt them. Life wants to love you. Let it. I know that this, all of the Capricorn energy, and now it's kind of happening in a different way with the Aquarius energy. Uh, anybody who feels that they're inherently unlovable, like anybody who struggles with um, self-love, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, self-love is <sighs> massive. So we've, on the one hand, we've got the Capricorn energy, Venus still in, in Capricorn, and that is relating a lot to your relationships, your romantic relationships, um, and relationships with your parents and with your children, okay? Those very intimate kind of nuclear relationships. And if your nuclear family relationships are dysfunctional, this is pointing to healing your own self-love, right? Healing your own self-love. Being able to look at yourself in the mirror this is a practice that some of you might be able to benefit from. Like, turn on that harsh bathroom mirror, stare at yourself in the mirror, and, like, look at yourself until you can love yourself. Like, and some people find this really triggering, right? Looking at yourself in the mirror will make you, like, want to cry, right? Or it'll just make you want to cringe. It will make you want to hate yourself, right? But all of those horrible feelings that you have about your body, right? This is body image for you or just about your past, whatever it is, those things need to come out. Like they need to come out, okay? You can't have this upper chakra healing if you have, all, or this heart healing even, or any of this, if you have all of these low frequency vibes about yourself, right? And if you have low self-worth, if you struggle to love yourself, then, um, then you will never be able to have the relationships that you want because your relationships that you get involved with, they reflect your own feelings towards yourself, right? So if you want to have a beautiful, loving partnership, you need to be able to love yourself, right? You need to be able to love yourself. It all starts from within. And just think about how your body is listening to you, right? When you say or think, your body is listening to your thoughts too. When you think horrible things about yourself, your body is listening. And that, that creates all kinds of dysfunction inside of your own body, right? So stand at the mirror and look at yourself and go through the process of releasing, like looking at all the things you don't like about yourself, like physically even. Look at the things you don't like about yourself physically and look at them until you can accept them. Look at them until you can be okay with them and then look at them until you can love them, right? Because of course you are worthy of love and of course you are valuable in this world. You are important. You are supposed to be here. Um, but you, you, it's, this is like a call that like to take accountability for, for your own self-love. You, you, you need to love yourself first. That, that's the name of the game. <laughs> self-love and this is for the people struggling right now i think the self-love situation is at the very very root core of all of that um and i think for people having like a much better time right now this is gonna there's like a leveling up that can happen here okay like if you already have worked you know spent your whole lifetime working on your self-esteem and all that and you're feeling pretty good and you know you, you feel pretty good about yourself um but there's like um deeper levels of self-love and self-value that you can experience that are going to help you level up uh like example that's coming to mind is when i started making videos <laughs> listening to myself talk was like the worst i almost couldn't bear to post a video because i would you know I don't, I don't actually watch all of my videos now before I post them. I'll just skip through them to make sure that the like audio was decent enough and then I post it. At the beginning, I would go through and I'd edit the video and I would have to listen to everything I said and I would like stew over everything I said and then I would just, it was horrible. Just listening to my own voice, I could barely stand it, right? Because that's a different way of looking in a mirror. I'd have to look at myself and I could hardly stand it. It was like just agonizing. But of course, I just kept doing it and now it gets easier and now I'm gotten pretty much used to like watching and listening to myself talk and that was an important process for me to go through for me that's like a throat chakra healing and it's like unlocking higher levels of it's like unlocking more opportunities for me to like advance in my spiritual purpose and to advance in like my career and all of that right this moving on up so for those of you who are already vibing pretty high um these deeper levels of self-worth self-value and self-love um, and valuing your own accomplishments and like valuing your own light, right? Moving you up into higher levels of like potential for success, right? Opening up those higher doors. 
<sighs> okay, so it's interesting. I keep, <laughs> I just keep seeing how, you know, the light keeper, star seed, light worker, spiritual people community, the awakened collective, maybe I should say, are, are like right now spread out like this, this huge bandwidth. Some people doing really good, some people doing like really struggling, right? And then a bunch of people kind of in the middle. And what they're showing me now is that later on in the year, we synchronize, right? Now we're like this, we're all spread out. We're going to be coming together, but it's actually not coming down. It's like everybody's like moving on up. Some people are going to be going like on a really um, fast fast moving, like it's not fast yet, but it will be fast later this year, moving on up to these greater heights. Um, yeah, as if another reason that all of this is happening and why there's this great level of diversity of experience right now is because we're actually trying to synchronize so that we can synchronize for Lionsgate. <laughs> it's going to be very interesting um, to come back to this video in six months and see what's happening with Lionsgate because I feel like we're actually already getting ready for the 2022 Lionsgate, August 8th, um, when that massive portal opens up and all of that source light floods the earth. We're, we're somehow already working on that, right? We're already working on that and we're doing this work to prepare. And around Lionsgate 2022, there's going to be a profound level of synchronization um, among the Awakened Collective and even with everybody else, right? All, all of the sleepwalkers, anybody who's still sleepwalking, there's not going to be nearly as many people who are as deeply asleep by the time this year is done, right? Around this August is going to be like deep levels of awakening through the entire human collective, right? We are all synchronizing on a deeper level and it starts now in Aquarius season because this Aquarius season is it's Aquarius is about the collective, right? Aquarius is entirely about the collective and the network. So Right now, all of the different lights are coming online, coming online, and all the lights, every soul, every light needs to be vibrating at this brighter level. Um, we're all trying to be glowing. It's just like a string of Christmas lights, right? You want, typically you want all the lights to be mostly the same level of brightness. And so that's what's kind of happening. Everybody is synchronizing. So the people who are really um, kind of in a lower place right now, your level of brightness is going to be amplifying very quickly over the next six months, right? You're, you have a very long journey to go on over the next six months until you get into that brighter place. And those of us who are already kind of uh, feeling pretty good and doing pretty well for ourselves, um, we're holding the light, right? We're just holding the light. We're saying, okay, this is the benchmark of light and everyone else is going to come up to this level. And this is that we will all be shining bright. So some people are already holding the light. Some people are expanding their light. And then Something, something happening. I don't know. We'll find out in six months. So <laughs> I love you guys. I'm going to leave you there. Bye.